ان شاء الله today we will complete and finish spinal cervical spine injury in the subaxial region subaxial region is from C3 to C7 we already finished C0 occipital condyle 1 and 2 atlas and axis how we can classify it classify according to Allen Ferguson classification Allen Ferguson depends on the position of the head at the time of the injury and the deforming force the same as leg Hansen classification in the ankle for example flexion is the position of the head at the time of the injury but compression is the actual deforming force you have also vertical compression vertical compression the head is neutral and the deforming force is compression flexion distraction extension compression extension distraction and so on the most important here is flexion distraction flexion the head is flexed and distraction distraction is starting from the tip of the spinous process with attached ligament and to progress anteriorly for sure it will either sublax the spine or dislocate it so the most important in the subaxial spine is subaxial facet dislocation here is the facet here is the facet here is the facet what is the normal orientation of the facet the inferior articular process of the above vertebra of the cephalic vertebrae is posterior to the superior articular process of the caudal vertebrae this is the normal orientation this is posteriorly and this is anteriorly this is posteriorly and this is anterior here is the reverse of the direction the inferior articular process of the superior vertebrae is anterior to the superior articular process of the inferior vertebra or caudal vertebrae there is here uh, mild subluxation but here if the tip of the inferior articular process of the cephalic vertebrae is at the tip of the superior articular process of the lower vertebrae this is called pierced if it frankly dislocated anterior this is locked locked part why it is important if you have this x-ray and coming to you in the er you have to reduce it you have to convert look the part into beer shit part then complete reduction look part look the facet the inferior articular process of the superior vertebra is completely anteriorly completely reversed its position how we can classify what is the mechanism flexion distraction again what is the classification here here is the facet here is the facet is sublaxed and nearly there is no translation of the above vertebra to the uh, lower vertebra here is translation about 25 this is 50 percent of the vertebrae if translated below the 50 it is unilateral facet dislocation unilateral if it is translated more than 50 it is bilateral dislocation and this is the floating vertebrae this is the stage 4 so stage 1 is only subluxation without translation about around translation about 25 is a unilateral and bilateral dislocation is more than 50 percent of the width of the vertebrae and uh, translation then the floating more than 100 percent again proper history including the mechanism and ALTS protocol then the neurology is important 
according to Asia sheet, which you already uh, taken in uh, the spine exam lecture. But there we took the root injury and we didn't take a spinal cord injury. Here we will take it. Spinal cord injury either in acute state and after that acute state. Acute state either neurogenic shock or spinal shock both manifested by hypotension and bradycardia spinal shock is very important you willn't you couldn't detect the neurological level except if this period is finished this period the whole mark of finishing of the spinal shock is return of bulbocavernous reflex and or two to three days passed from the uh, injury to detect the neurological level you have to exclude that this patient the patient is because it is completely shut down of the spinal cord function so how how you will detect the neurological level the spinal cord is physiologically shut down so you have to exclude this period to detect the neurological level how to exclude that this patient in a spinal shock or not in the spinal shock according to bulbocavernous reflex and duration two to three days what is bulbocavernous reflex pulling on the gland penis there is anal contraction pulling here is here this is bulbocavernous reflex there in the spinal lecture we took a root function to detect motor and sensory regarding the motor the ability to move and to use the muscle has to be graded what it's a grade zero is null you have nothing five is five five on five normal strength one I uh, just a flickering of the muscle move with gravity type 2 against gravity against the full resistance from the three is a useful muscle in the daily living we we didn't use movement with gravity so useful function is starting from the three three and four five is a useful function of course five is normal so three and four is a useful muscle one and two one and two no no useful function Asia classification of the spinal cord complete spinal cord injury it means that no motor and no sensory and no reflexes and the same for spinal shock so how to differentiate between complete spinal cord injury and the spinal shock according to the, yes the presence of bulbocavernous reflex and passing of two to three day or with or incomplete means that no motor but there is some sensation below the level e is an elephant normal function c useless muscle d useful muscle below the neurological level again complete a you have to exclude from spinal shock incomplete b is reserve it some sensation with no motor c incomplete useless muscle function d incomplete useful muscle function and the e is normal again complete no motor or sensory or reflexes but the spinal shock is finished so the bulbocavernous reflex is intact this is asia a incomplete injury six forms simple transection of the spinal cord this is the posterior column posterior column for proper reception p4p lateral part of the spinal cord and ventral part have the same tracts lateral corticospinal lateral spinocalamic anterior corticospinal anterior spinocalamic corticospinal for motor and spinocalamic for pain 
So if you have some affection here, you will loss of proprioception. If you have here or there, you will have loss of motor and sensory. This is a simple speaking. Also, the arrangement of motor is upper limb towards the center and lower limb towards the periphery. So if you have a lesion in the central part, the upper limb is affected more than the lower limb. Central cord syndrome, one of the most common incomplete spinal cord lesion you will face in your real clinical practice. Is coming from hyper extension of the spinal cord. This is usually an old lady or old man slipped uh, while standing and uh, has a hyper extension injury in already stenotic spinal canal there is a buckling and the bulging of the ligamentum flavum pressing the cord leading to what is called central cord lesion this lesion when you do the uh, the old lady the old man coming to you suffering that he can't uh, move his upper limb uh, well lower limb uh, is better than the upper limb and when you did the x-ray you didn't find except spondylosis osteoarthritis you didn't find the fracture so central cord as usual as previously tell you the upper limb is affected than the uh, uh, lower limb the prognosis of this uh, patient is fair it uh, about to be good the lower function and the uh, lower limb and the sphincteric function will return upper limb also will return mostly except the hand function so there is a residual clumsy hand difficulty in the hand movement anterior cord syndrome is the worst prognosis has the worst prognosis anterior so affected anteriorly so the cortico spinal canal uh, cortico spinal uh, uh, cortico uh, uh, salamic tract and uh, spinal salamic tract is affected so ipsilateral motor and sensory function is affected brown sequard without detail please without detail this is an hemisection of the spinal cord ipsilateral motor contralateral pain without detail this is the most excellent has the most excellent prognosis Posterior cord affection of the posterior column, so the proprioception is affected. Very rare. One of the most important clinical scenario in incomplete spinal cord region to differentiate between conus and coda. What is conus? Conus is the terminal part of the spinal cord. Here, here is the terminal part of the spinal cord. Terminal part of the spinal cord means that. S5 center is here, center, not root. Then S4 center here. Then S3 center is here, and so on. And the roots here is coming from above roots. This is the roots. For example, the root here is uh, forming the coda equina. Here is caving to L1 below the pedicle. Then L2 below the pedicle on both sides l3 below the pedicle and so on s1 to the s1 foramen and so on so anatomically it is about to finish the corners on l1 l2 and the coda in the remaining bar so if you have a burst fracture here anatomically it is a conus here anatomically most it is a coda and so on this is anatomically this is the root function, pass pressing, pressing symmetrically on the coda. So it is caused bilateral motor, bilateral sensory and sphincteric, while conus. This is the centers of S2 to S5, and this is the sphincteric function. When you have a bursting here, you will mostly have a sphincteric without lower. Uh, lower limb affection either motor or sensory 
mostly what is the clinical relevance you faced in the uh, ER with a bursting fracture of L1 and you judge it is a stable the patient already coming to you with minimal pain and already is walking you did x-ray there is an ex acceptable criteria this acceptable criteria is compressing uh, is com compressing on the corners so it is mostly the uh, uh, the only presenting symptom for him is sphincteric and you didn't manage a uh, you didn't uh, do a BR for him so again this is the anatomical and the clinical difference this is a very uh, common uh, mistake for uh, especially for medical legal issue please don't forget BR exam we will take it uh, in detail in the uh, thoracolumbar fractures so you have a spinal cord injury how you will manage there is a lot of protocols one of them is uh, steroid steroid actually is abandoned from many centers due to there is minimal neurological improvement actually in real life if he is young adult we can give him a steroid without comor comorbidities but if he ha if he is older old age with a lot of comorbidities we will uh, prefer not to give him uh, to maintain the arterial pressure above 85 is very important this is maintain the perfusion for the cord to improve hopefully hopefully to improve the uh, its function what is the dose for missile prednisolone loading dose about 30 not about exactly 30 milligram per kilogram in the first hour and the maintenance five uh, 0.4 milli f uh, per kilo per hour for the next day if presented to you uh, before three hours if presented from three to eight you will continue for two days if more than eight hours no use to uh, for misoprostol it is already contraindicated imaging again back to facet dislocation for all cervical spine ab lateral open mouth please show me the occipital cervical uh, junction cervical thoracic to uh, avoid missing lesion this is the uh, area of common common uh, affection there is something called non-contagious fracture if you have a c1 fracture and uh, or odontoid fracture there are about 50 percent uh, incidence of c6 fractures thoracic fractures and so on so you have to do x-ray for all other parts ct scan is mandatory for all cervical lesions mri is also mandatory either in emergency in the ER, in the er immediate in the er or uh, through appointment through obd this is insufficient x-ray here I see C1, C2, 3, 4, where is the rest? So, uh, and also in arthritic changes, you can't judge uh, what's going on. So CT is important. Timing of MRI regarding facet dislocation is controversial. This is a dislocation. As usual in our orthopedic curriculum, all dislocation should be reduced. We reduce this through traction through gardener will tongue. We will talk it later. So if you have a dislocation in already oriented patient and neurologically free, you can do traction without doing MRI immediately. You didn't go to the theater without doing MRI. This is an high energy trauma mostly will be fixed. 
you willn't go to MRI to go to theater without MRI. But when you will do MRI, if already alert without neurology, you can do uh, traction, immediate traction. If he has a complete spinal cord lesion, complete. So you can do traction. You didn't have anything to lose. The problem if incomplete and non-oriented patient, you have to see the disc state. You have to document it medical legal. Okay, but finally, before going to theater, you will do a, a MRI. Non-operative management, as I inform you first, throw traction, you have to reduce. Traction is done through gardener will tongue. Gardener will tongue is done in line with external occipital, external auditory meatus here and there. But actually, you want to exaggerate the deformity. You want to more flexion. So you can put it here, a little bit here. Here. To, uh, 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 when you're doing attraction, it will do a flexion moment. This is a bilateral facet dislocation. By the way, bilateral facet dislocation is easily reduced compared to unilateral facet dislocation. Bilateral facet dislocation because it is translated more than uh, 50%. This is the facet, this is the facet anterior, inferior articular process is anterior to the superior articular process and this is the reverse position. You will do a traction in a flexion position until reaching a bare sheet position, tip on tip. Then exerting extension with the help of your thumb and towel uh, also to do an extension. Again, starting in flexion till reaching pier sheet facet, then extend it and put the thumb here on the step when you're feeling the step. Operative treatment, this is a high energy trauma. It is mostly uh, unstable injury and he will need surgery. Please, before the surgery, a weak fiber optic intubation. Why a weak fiber optic intubation? The patient is neurologically free, and you decide him decide to uh, take him to the theater. After intubation through hyperextension of anesthesia doctor, he become neurologically injured, and after the surgery, the patient presented to you on the table with some type of spinal cord injury, either complete or incomplete. So for the safety of you and also the safety for the anesthesia doctor, a weak fiber optic intubation is mandatory. In these cases, we prefer to monitor the spinal status. This is separate literature, either motor evoked the potential, somatosensory evoked the potential, or spontaneous EMG we will see later, later in the separate literature. We fix him either posteriorly and to, and, or anterior. The rationale here is what? The rationale, if you have a posterior ligamentous disruption without anterior disc disruption. So why I have to go anterior? So if you, I have a posterior ligamentous disruption, I will fix him posterior. If I have anterior and the posterior, it is better to go anterior. Simple, easy surgery. But actually... In the clinical practice, most, most patient is disturbed posteriorly and anteriorly and we fix him single level ECDF is good for him. This is practically how we fix him, uh, reduce him posteriorly. This is atinaculum clamp, exaggerate the deformity. This is the uh, superior articular process of the uh, lower vertebrae and is lying posterior. In the reversal position, I want this part, this articular surface to be, to lie anteriorly. I will distract, then reduce it. I can use a bin field, I can use a bone hook, and so on. Anteriorly, we can use the Casper pin. We can use a, a bone distractor, uh, like this opening and levering the distractor to reduce it. 
also you can use a uh, cup elevator other simple fracture with the tips uh, spinous process fracture is a stable for sure but please this is an extension injury usually if it is flexion you have to exclude posterior ligamentous injury posterior ligamentous injury is the is one of the main stabilizers for your spine so that MRI is mandatory for all parts of the spine even in a simple injury but for example in this if there is no midline tenderness you can make uh, an MRI on the OBD in the clinic in the follow-up if there is a persistent pain uh, one of the uh, uh, of types of the fracture is clay Schuffler fracture uh, usually in C6 or 7 uh, fracture due to the ball, powerful ball of the muscle it's mostly during digging this is if flexion injury the posterior ligamentous injury is suspected and willing to be managed conservatively and uh, uh, will need aggressive management I mean fixation isolated transverse process for sure it is a conservative management but don't forget that the vertebral artery is there actually if asymptomatic and usually is asymptomatic you wouldn't do anything for the patient tear drop avulsion fracture this is tear drop avulsion fracture where here this is the tip uh, avulsed here due to the pull of annulus fibrosis of the disc here due to extension injury this is also a teardrop but not avulsion this is a dangerous injury the not a ship a larger part the uh, superior vertebrae is posterior translated uh, in relation to the uh, inferior vertebrae there is a sagittal uh, coronally oriented uh, fracture in the CT this is a dangerous and this is not for conservative this is a teardrop avulsion fracture and can be managed conservatively but there is this another one a teardrop fracture dangerous teardrop fracture and should be managed uh, operatively lateral mass fracture if it is non-displaced and uh, with no neurology and unilateral it is mostly a stable fracture if it is displaced bilateral or there is a spinal cord injury this is a high energy trauma so mostly it is un, uh, unstable so it needs fixation this is the rule in lateral mass please don't forget in all spinal trauma cases posterior ligamentous injury you have to exclude throw palpation step you will feel a step or through the MRI the goal for whatever operative or surgical management is to maintain stability to maintain alignment and decompress if there is a neurological uh, deterioration what is this how you will manage please inform me in a comment how to manage this case the answer of the previous uh, question in the previous literature this after taking a proper history after doing ALT protocol after neurological examination root and cord we will uh, this x-ray show a lateral x-ray showing fracture of the bar of C2 Hagman fracture uh, little uh, uh, no angulation and uh, 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 about two to three millimeter translation this is mostly type uh, one fracture but I don't see the facet here well so I need AB I need control supervision flexion extension view it could be a spontaneously reduced type 3 so you have to differentiate if it is type 1 and also CT and MRI if it is only type 1 I will conserve him please be sure 
to subscribe to receive the new videos and thank you